everyone and welcome to this video song frontier video my name is jay wakefield today is may the 8th 2015. now on the 7th of may which at the time of recording was yesterday the uk held the 2015 general election now this has been the first general election since 2010 where the Liberal Democrats entered into a coalition with the Conservatives and then proceeded to mess up all of the United Kingdom in it, mate. Um, <clears throat> and it's also the first general election since um, the Scottish referendum last September, September the 18th, 2014. Now, a lot has happened in the past five years. We've seen sharp austerity. We've seen huge numbers of people being uh, being punished, um, you know, for being unable to find jobs. We've seen huge numbers of people relying on food banks. We've seen a lot of people. Um, we've seen a lot of people with disabilities being wrongly declared fit to work and then subsequently dying. And, um, you know, it's actually been quite a horrible time. So, the election then, it really, it really um, got a lot of people interested. There was a lot of people actually, you know, really, really kind of taking an interest this time. I mean, there was in 2010. But um, this time, people have been taking even more of an interest in the election. And um, as a result, uh, <clears throat> it's been quite an emotive one. Anyway, what's happened? What exactly happened in this election? Well, first of all, let me talk about Scotland, because that's where I live. In Scotland... Um, we have 59 constituencies in Scotland. So that's 59 seats in the Westminster government. Westminster Parliament. So, the party um, that a lot of people in Scotland were supporting were the Scottish National Party. Now, they have been our first majority government um, since we actually had our own par parliament devolved to us back in the 90s. Uh, they were voted in in 2011. Um, you know, and they've done quite a lot of good stuff for us. You know, they, they for example, uh, put a moratorium on fracking. Uh, they have been trying to absorb a lot of the austerity um, you know they've sought to protect the NHS um, you know well in England the NHS has been yeah pretty much I think they're trying to sell it off in fact they are but um, <clears throat> you know there's a, a lot that the SNP had done for us already so, um, you know, they've really kind of proved themselves this year. Um, but uh, what I didn't expect, which I'm very happy about, was uh, the fact that the SNP, apart from three seats, which, let's be honest, were strongholds for their particular parties, we have taken, we've actually taken 56 out of 59 seats. The SNP has actually taken all of those seats, 56 out of 59. So we are sending a very, very large contingent of SNP MPs to Westminster. So you know what? Well done, Scotland. Well done, Scotland. And I mean this genuinely. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I actually do mean this genuinely. Now, the seats that we didn't gain where um, Dumfrieshire, um, they actually uh, held on 
the uh, the Conservatives actually held on to the Dumfriesshire seat. Um, I can't even remember which Edinburgh seat it was, but um, I I know the name of the um, the MP who um, kept it, Ian Murray. Um, one of my uh, colleagues actually uh, said that Ian Murray, he's not actually a bad politician. He's he's not a career po- you know he's he's not in it you know for uh, the sake of his career. He you know actually genuinely cares. So you know I will give Labour that one. Um, and the Liberal Democrat, um, the Liberal Democrat Scottish Secretary, um, Al- Alistair Carmichael, he kept his seat um, in the Orkney and Shetland constituency. So, um, but apart from that, everything has turned SNP. You know, I'm really quite used to Aberdeen being... Um, a Labour town, but um, obviously the you know they've had uh, Labour, they've had Labour Liberal coalitions, Labour Tory coalitions, and uh, Liberal, um, Liberal Tory coalitions. Sorry, let's let's try that again. They've had uh, Liberal Labour, Liberal Tory, and Labour Tory coalitions in the past. Um. You know, and certainly during the referendum, they were quite the uh, the Labour Party in Aberdeen. They were quite nasty. They le- illegally used taxpayers' money um, to fund leaflets saying how uh, Aberdeen would be a stronger city, uh, being part of the United Kingdom. A wee bit illegal that. Um, certainly against the rules of um, play with the um, certainly within the electoral uh, commission. Anyway, um, so now Aberdeen is an SNP city. We've actually sent uh, Kirsty Blackman and Callum McCaig to Westminster. You know, so congratulations, congratulations to you guys. You've done really well. Um, you know, it's um, it's been a very positive campaign fought by the Scottish National Party. Also, I'd like to congratulate Gordon on re-electing. Um, the, the constituency garden, not just some guy named Gordon, by the way. Um, I would like to um, congratulate the uh, Gordon constituency for sending Alex Salmond back to Westminster. Can't imagine they're going to be too pleased with that. But, uh, you know, Alex Salmond, you know, he's done quite a lot for our country. And, um, you know, congratulations to him. Now, I need a cup of tea. But I'm not going to get one until after I finish this video. However, I am going to talk about the rest of the UK, which will only intensify my need for a cup of tea. What have they done? Exactly what have they done? Well, <clears throat> there's no easy way to put this, so I'll just kind of come right out and say it. The Conservatives have a majority government in Westminster. Yeah. Now, I've had at least two people, I've actually had two people um, actually post on my Facebook wall this morning um, thanking me, obviously sarcastically, for the Tory government. Now, I would like to say this, guys, you know, um, because, uh, you know, a few people have actually been saying this and, you know, it's actually starting to get very old very quickly. I didn't vote Tory. I actually voted SNP. Now, let's, for example, imagine that every Scottish seat was won by Labour. That still would not have been enough with what they've won in England, which isn't really that much, if I'm honest. Uh, that would still not have been enough, even if they'd have had all 59 Scottish seats, it would not have been enough to actually overtake the Tories. So, you know what? No, it's not okay to blame us up here. You know, for you guys having, well, for all of us at, at the moment, having a Tory government, you know, that's not okay. And it also shows what 
independent supporters like myself have been saying for a long time until we're blue in the hair. That we very rarely, I'm not going to say never because I believe it has happened where we've had governments that we've wanted, but it's usually because we've been sided by, um, you know, usually England has actually joined us in those choices. But very rarely have we ever had the governments that we vote for. Quite often we've had Tory governments that we did not vote for. You know, it's... Um, the last time the Tories were popular in Scotland was the 50s. Now, you know, obviously Scotland has had a few Tory MPs dotting about the place. But, I mean, they've, um, in recent times, uh, the Conservatives have not been very popular in Scotland, really. But yet, we're, we still find ourselves governed by them. You know, and that there makes a fantastic case for independence. Obviously, you, you guys know um, how I feel about the referendum. You know, how it was conducted. Um, you know, I, I don't feel that it was entirely legal, the way it was conducted. And certainly questions need to be raised about the count in certain places and questions need to be raised about um, the tactics of the uh, Better Together campaign scaring pensioners into believing that um, if they voted for independence they would lose their pensions despite the fact that um, you still get your pension your UK state pension wherever you are in the world if you want to move to Patagonia you'll still get your pension anyway um, so yeah you can, uh, you can maybe then spend some of your pension on some broadband to, the, to uh, call me on Skype and tell me how you like living in Pontarina. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, back to, uh, back to the UK. Back, um, back to the rest of uh, the United Kingdom. Tories have won a majority. So if you think the last five years have been hard... You have every right to think that, because they have, you know, the Tories, you know, I mean, things that really stand out for me um, are the um, legitimisation of wholesale disabledism by the Tories, you know, the uh, state media, the mainstream media, also um, allowing, um, you know, also legitimising um, the uh, scroungers rhetoric. That was that's been used against people with disabilities, such as myself. Obviously, I've seen, you know, firsthand, um, you know what's what's happened, um, you know, with a lot of people who I work with and a lot of people who I work for, you know, just just what these cuts have done, and of course, you know, I keep my eyes on any kind of news story that's uh, to do with uh, disability rights. So um, I've um, obviously been able to see um, the coalition's um, so-called reforms in action there as well, you know. And there's a lot of people who have died. Um, not only has uh, you know, not only all that, but uh, funding for um, support to support places has been cut. A lot of places have had to shut down. And it's not just people with disabilities who've been hit. You've also got job seekers being sanctioned, you know, for the tiniest of things. Job centres, you know, have been, tar you know, there's been, you know, reports of uh, targets within job centres. You know, Channel 4 actually did an under undercover documentary about it and found that, found that some job centres do actually set targets for the number of claimants uh, need sa needing sanctioned. Um, you know, and a lot of people do enjoy sanctioning claimants. You know, and, and what's that, what that's led to is a lot of people who are on job seekers already struggling to make ends meet, being unable to access the basic kind of welfare that they need to live off of while they try and get a job in the non-existent economy. Now, the Tories can tell you all they like that uh, Britain's economy has improved, but it's a smokescreen. It's not improved for your everyday 99% of the population. It's improved greatly if you're one of the top percent, top one percent, and you're like literally 
uh, you're literally dripping in money. Seriously, you know, then obviously Britain's economy has done absolute wonders for you. But for the rest of us, no, the economy has not improved. But if you think these five years have been hard, then, well, let's be honest. We have an unfettered Tory government in Westminster now. It's gonna get worse. You've not seen anything yet. And I, for one, am not looking forward to that. The mainstream media are still completely lambasting Scotland. And I have heard of a few... I've heard... I have heard tell of a few MPs, former MPs, who've actually turned around and had the cheek to say, we need a better electorate. But then again, that's the way democracy is going in society nowadays. I mean, this this is why, um, you know, this this is why all the rezoning takes place in the United States. And this is why, you know, the um, redistricting is taking place over here, like, you know, changing of boundaries. Because, you know, time was the electorate would choose their representative. Now it seems the representatives choose their electorate. I don't know about you, but I don't think that that is right. But I know one thing. If the Conservatives try anything too radical, I'm pretty sure that Scotland will just turn around and say, enough is enough, it's time for us to walk. And I think that we need to do that. I don't believe that the last referendum was well handled at all. And I do believe that um, a unilateral declaration of independence is probably the only way that we're actually going to get the democratic country that we keep trying to vote for. Now, I'm not saying that, um, you know, I want, I want an independent Scotland because I want the SNP to stay. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, who I've spoken to who would have liked to have voted Green in this election. You know, but unfortunately, the Greens just don't have enough clout. But I'm pretty sure that if we did have a referendum and we won and we became independent, I do believe that the Greens would have a lot more influence. You know, we, we've we started, you know, in recent times, we, we've started to have a tradition of uh, voting left of centre really, in Scotland. So, I think, I mean, that that is a good thing. You know, that, that we've, uh, you know, we are a progressive society nowadays. It's, you know, it's very nice uh, to know that. Um, <clears throat> but, um, also, when I'm talking about a referendum... I would also like to make aware that I am aware. I would also like to make it known that I am aware that um, the uh, a second referendum was never in the the SNP manifesto. They made sure that that wouldn't be included. But I do believe that um, you know if Westminster really start to try and push us around, as I believe they are going to, I think the Scot I think most of the Scottish electorate is now awake. We've smelled the coffee. We're awake. You're not going to put us back in the box. You know, we got out of the box for the referendum. And we've certainly not been back in the box since. And I don't think we're going to get back in the box. At least I hope not. Please, Scotland, don't get back in the box. Because that would really suck. Um, you know, we've... You know... <laughs> successive governments have over time really tried to give Scotland the royal do-over. You know, and um, I think if if this continues, we really will have to reconsider our position in the United Kingdom. I would all, I would like to stay. Um, this is what I was coming to. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't like regular people in the United Kingdom. You know, we do. You know, we like you a lot, as just as we like everyone else in the world. Scotland, you know, before before England took over, Scotland was always quite a traditional. Um, you know, quite traditionally a uh, friendly nation, you know, the great Scottish-French alliance. You know, we, we've always uh, quite liked French people, um, you know. I mean, I personally don't have anything wrong with anybody of any nationality. All I really care about is if they're a good person or not. 
you know, it doesn't doesn't really matter to me. You know, so, you know, even if we become independent, the rest of the UK, you don't need to worry. We don't hate you. We're just saying that our politics are different. And it has shown in this election how different our politics are. You know? And I think that if we go it independent and we do well, we can show, we can show that, you know, we will be able to work as a progressive country. This is Scotland we're talking about. We are awkward. We're stubborn. We do not just give up. We keep going until what we're trying to do works. That's what we're known for. You know? And it's not about saying that Scotland's better than anyone else. Because, you know, we acknowledge it. We're never going to be better than anyone else. Nor do we ever want to be. You know, we just want to be able to run our own affairs. You know, and one of the affairs that we want to run is being friendly with everyone else. And you're not going to... We're not going to be friendly with everyone else if we say, Hey, we're better than you are. But that's not our intention. You know? Is it that much of a crime to want to have our own sovereignty? No, it's not. But then again, you know, like I said, this election was not about the referendum. Not about another referendum. But I've got to be honest... I would be very surprised if the referendum, the result of the referendum, didn't influence people to actually vote SMP this time around. You know? And I'm sorry. But, um, you know, I, I saw a YouTuber going, oh yeah, well, uh, the rest of the UK should have a referendum instead of Scotland. You know, we we should tell them what we, we want rather than them, they just dictating it. Well, excuse me. I'm sorry that you. Um, I'm sorry that you feel this way, but um, I don't know if you. Um, if you open um, some sort of a history book, you might actually find that um, before 1807, um, we. Hang on, 1807. No. I think that you'll find that before, you know, kind of the, the 18th century, we may have been a wee bit independent. You know? So, please just, yeah. But, um, you know, a lot of people have been woken up politically. The Tories, I think, they're going to have to work really, really hard because, yes, they do have a majority government, but only just. You know, so I think if they try and do too much, hopefully there will be a backlash. You know, I really do hope that Kirsty and Callum and Alex and the rest of the SNP crew can actually work to make our voices heard, but not just that, but to make life better for everyone in the UK. What I find really funny is that during the referendum, the UK kept telling us, oh, we want you, we need you, we can't live if living is without you. We can't live, we can't get any more, we can't live if living is without you. We can't live. <coughs> anymore <laughs> you know they said all that and, the, and Scotland returned a no vote but now the tune has changed somewhat it's kind of changed from Mariah Carey's can't live to the black eyed peas is just shut up shut up just shut up shut up they don't want us to have our voice you know Ed um, Jim Murphy Ed Mel <laughs> I can't even mind who it was, but I think it was Ed Miliband who said he would rather let the Tories win than um, than do a deal with the SNP. I mean, that is the quickest and easiest way to take all of your gravitas and put it in the bucket. Well done. Jim Murphy as well. You know, he, he's, um, you know, doesn't, did not like the SNP, you know. He, he basically, you know, just kind of forced aggressive unionism you know, uh, onto the Scottish people. And, um, well, it's no wonder that Labour got wiped out. You know, and, and the Liberal Democrats, well, they got everything they had coming to them. UKIP, 
Well, yeah, they got one seat, and I personally think it's one seat too many, but um, Nigel Farage, he's going to have to step down now. Um, you know, good riddance to bad rubbish, really, if I'm going to be completely honest. Um, you know, if you want my honest opinion, I think he should uh, become a comedian. Um, because um, he's brilliant on the delivery. Um, you know, he can... <laughs> He's brilliant on the delivery of his lines, let's be honest. But um, as a politician, no thank you. No thank you very much. You know, and I just hope that the um, that UKIP will just be, uh, you know, will become, you know, just an insignificant blob on British history, really. Um, but uh, to those of you who voted Conservative in England, what the hell were you doing? Seriously? Were five years of forced austerity not enough for you? You know, it seemed, and, and I wouldn't mind, but Liberal Democrats lost their seats to the Conservatives. Now, I understand Liberal Democrats losing seats because they actually colluded with the Conservatives, but punishing them by actually voting Conservative? What on earth was that all about? I don't understand. I just don't understand it at all. You know, the Conservatives have actually, um, you know, they've, they've really screwed the country over for anyone who's not in the top 1% wealth bracket. So why? Why why did you do it? You know, why did you vote Tory? You really, do you really think they're going to make life better for you and your family and your friends and anyone else who you care about? Because I can guarantee you they're not. I just, you know, and, and I am going to echo the guy. Um, I can't even mind, he's, he's a guy with guitars uh, from uh, the south of England. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at me. I know my YouTubers right enough. Um, <laughs> I am actually going to echo some guy with uh, guitars from the south of England here. You're right, mate. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to echo the actual one who was, uh, watching, whose video I was just watching. If you voted Tory, I really do hope that you never become disabled, lose your job, um, have an extra bedroom, um, you know, or anything like that. Become poor. I hope that never happens to you. Because then you will realise. You will realise what you've done. You know? We're in for a very rough ride. Let's just hope that our 59... Uh, let's just hope that our 56 Scottish National Party members can actually rein the Tories in somewhat. I don't know how much I'll be able to do so, you know. I am obviously very ner nervous. But I'm also very happy at the same time that Scotland actually did return such a high number of SNP MPs. And it really does make a statement about where we're headed. You know, we're wanting our voices heard. Now, and the SNP are not the xenophobes that you think they are. Oh, and I've seen people saying that, you know, all the, you know, all the racist bigots, you know, the SNP, you know, you should go and hang yourselves. Yeah, you know what? Stay classy. <laughs> Stay classy. <laughs> and in fact, you know what? <laughs> have a bun you deserve it now a lot of you won't get that but that's an end joke between me and my friends but you know what I'm, I'm just driven to absolute distraction here you know I'm, all the idiocy that seems to be going on but certainly the unionist idiocy that seems to be going on with this election I mean Seriously, how was anybody supposed to vote when it was like, you know, people were like saying, vote Tory, get SNP, vote SNP, get Tory, vote Labour, get SNP, vote Labour, get Tory, vote UKIP, get Green, vote pl uh, vote Plate Cymru, get a tin of baked beans, B buy a lump of Gloucester cheese, get the legalised cannabis alliance, take your, ca uh, take your car to a... Um, take your car to a Tesco carriage for petrol instead of going to a BP carriage... 
get the monster raving loony party. I don't know. They've been trying to confuse us. The Unionist Party's manifestos have not been about, hey, vote for us and we're going to do some stuff that's really good and you'll really enjoy it and Britain will be a better place to live in. No. The Unionist Parties have been going, the SNP, they're going to get you. They're going to get you. You hear that creak in the night as you're trying to get asleep? That's the SNP coming to get you, so it is. You know, that's not helped anyone. And in fact, all it's really done is to bolster the SNP vote. Seems that, And it seems that every time David Cameron's opened his trap, the SNP have actually <laughs> gained more support. You know, someone was like, hey, maybe David Cameron's a mole for the SNP. It would really seem that way. Anyway... I'm going to head off now. I really do need that cup of tea. <laughs> but um, in conclusion, I'd like to say thank you all for actually voting in the election. Um, those who voted for the SNP. Um, I would like to also say, um, you know, Scotland, we've got our work cut out for us now. We need to mobilise to try and minimise the effects of what's to come over the next five years. To the rest of the UK, and actually, Wales, I want to talk to you for a moment. What on earth happened? You voted Tory. Why? Why did you do that? All I have to say is this. Played Cymru. Really, you need to go back and rethink your strategy. Because Wales needs a party that's going to look out for Wales. Same as Scotland needs a party that looks out for Scotland. We've got that. We've got the SNP. Northern Ireland. I, I, I just, I don't know enough about Irish politics, if I'm honest. I mean, the DUP don't seem that good. Um, but I know actually, yeah, for, you know, from talking to someone who lives um, in the Republic of Ireland, that Sinn Féin are probably not a good idea either. So I just don't even know anymore. Um, you know what? If you live in England and you're wanting to vote, let's say in the next election, it will happen. Should do anyway, unless uh, Cameron uh, declares himself dictator, which could happen. Um, I'm pretty sure it may. I mean, uh, there was reports of a Tory coup. You know, if, if um, David Cameron was saying if uh, Labour got him propped up by the SNP, then uh, they would actually um, say that uh, that uh, government would not be legitimate and uh, he would uh, stay in number 10. Um, so yeah, that, that, wasn't, um, that wasn't very good to say, was it, Mr. Cameron? You, you really didn't do yourself any favours. Oh wait, you still got in. That's quite sad. Um, but, um, you know, my advice to everyone in England is you have a Green Party, use it. Join the Greens. You know, if you're living in England, Labour, Lib Dems, Tories, they're no good for you. Join the Green Party. Make it a massive movement. You know? Tell them what you want to happen. Join them. Go to their meetings. Tell them what you would like to happen. Work with them. Maybe even run on their ticket for the next election. You know, make change happen. You know, I'm a member of the SNP up here. And I speak to, you know, I, I do quite often speak to my um, local representatives, uh, Kevin Stewart, Kirsty Blackburn and Callum McCaig on the SNP Volunteers Facebook page. You know, I mean, this, this is how good SNP people are. You can contact them on Facebook and they'll respond. Um... But uh, certainly, you know, south of the border, I would say, go and vote for change, guys. Go and work towards change. You've got probably another five years to get doing it. So get cracking. Oh, and Scotland, we've got work to do. It's not over for us yet, because we've got an election next year. You know, we need to get cracking on that. We need to actually think about what, who we're going to vote into Holyrood. SNP maybe? Let's hope. They've done us uh, proud. 
well that's uh, that's all for now folks um i hope you've enjoyed this video i'm sorry it's been another political one um but um i hope you've managed to get something out of it if you like what i do um and you'd like to see more please feel free to subscribe to my channel and while you're there please feel free to like videos on frontier on facebook but for now guys thank you for watching and i hope you'll all join me for my next video